Recording in progress. All right, I'll call to order the Town Council Committee of the whole meeting of Tuesday, March 8th at 6.32. All councilors are present with the exception of Councilor Westerville. <laughs> Calendars and communications. Uh, <coughs> Councilor Kassiri. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. On uh, Thursday, Councilor Jones and I walk the Holstein property with Chris Regan and an engineer from any edge to view the landscape of the property. We also handed out flyers to the Flanders Road neighbors for coffee with the counselors. And on Saturday, we attended coffee with the counselors. Um, I participated with counselors Franco and Jones and Mayor Melendez at the Groton Public Library. Thank you to all of the residents for coming out to give us your feedback. Um, we sat down and listened to residents in groups at all different tables and listen to feedback and concerns. And it was a really great opportunity to hear directly from the residents for nearly two hours about the data center. And I received more emails urging the council to take up short-term rentals as an agenda item and other emails about housing, development, data centers, um, and an invitation to the SEC Percussion Ensemble on Friday at the Grasso Tech Gym at 545. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor McBride. Thank you, uh, President Lynn. It's nothing, uh, not, it was a slow week for me in terms of uh, activity other than the various uh, numerous emails and conversations with residents uh, mainly focused on the data center. Just a lot of uh, discussions and emails on that subject. Thank, thank you. you. Council Bumgarner. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I also attended, um, or, uh, actually I didn't also attend, I'm sorry. Uh, attended the community resiliency uh, meeting held in uh, the, the, held by the city of Groton. Uh, very informative, learning about the various um, uh, resiliency projects that are underway, and um, Scott, Scott's here. Uh, solicited feedback from uh, residents as well. Um, very much enjoyed being a part of those discussions and uh, seeing uh, many city residents. And on uh, Friday, I had the privilege of attending a Fleetwood Mac uh, tribute concert. Um, the uh, invitation of Council Bordelon, um, very, um, really wonderful seeing uh, our youth perform um, uh, the chorus, uh, jazz band, uh, the orchestra all performed with the Fleetwood Mac, um, uh, Fleet, Fleetwood Mac uh, band. So um, very much enjoyed that and, and great again seeing uh, kids do what they love. And also have received several correspondences um, with respect to data centers and um, a host of other issues. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Bordelon. Um, thank you. Um, I too attended the Fleetwood Mac uh, fundraiser um, for the um, Fitch High School um, Music Booster fundraiser. As Councilor Bumgardner stated, uh, orchestra, band, and uh, choir. It's great every year they do one big concert and all the money and proceeds go. Um, to um, help fund and offset the cost of the music department. Um, I also spent all day Saturday at the um, Fitch High School, well, not Fitch High School, um, the Fencing uh, States Tournament, um, which had, I don't even know how many schools were there, but I believe for each section, for um, Epi and Foil, um, they had over, I think, 50 students for each um, men's and women's, so it was really awesome. Don't remember all the places. One that stands out to me is one of our um, uh, sophomores. Uh, she placed, uh, I, I believe it was fourth um, overall the states as a sophomore, which was a huge accomplishment, um, as well as some other students who um, placed um, you know, in the top 50 altogether, but I believe we, f we had three in the top 35. So uh, a lot of fun, a lot of interesting uh, things there. So um, I also received the same communications that everyone else received, lots about the da data center, and um, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I was just con I was contacted this week by um, Any Edge, and they are requesting that we call a special meeting for the 15th and vote on the final agreement. Um, so I'm asking consent from the, the council on whether or not they want to have a special meeting and uh, and vote on the 15th next week. So just go by hands. Uh, point of clarification on that before we move forward. 
if I was to vote for having a consensus to have a special meeting because a developer contacted you, um, when are we going to review that draft document before then? Um, I can see supporting something like that, but I do feel that we should have had a chance to have a meeting and fully vet that document in its full capacity, as well as have a chance for people to come out and have a public comment on the actual document. So pushing this forward for a special meeting because if a developer wants that and they're putting the pressure in time, I just wanted to know how we would proceed um, as a council. I think that we should be following a pattern with all development in this town, and I, I don't agree necessarily that we should take Point the order. pressure without Point of order. knowing order. when the Point of order. What's your point of when order? the um, What's your point no of order? timeline here. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We're getting past a clarifying question now and getting into opinion. Thank you for that. So the clarifying question is. What will be our process to review this so, document so, and yeah, have a public hearing I'm before asking, pushing something through? Let me take the floor Thank real you. quick. So I'm asking for a consensus if the council wants to meet on March 15th to vote on the data center agreement. There will be no meeting from now until then. There will be the meeting will be on the 15th. That's what I'm asking consensus for. So my point of clarification is how can we vote or um, well, have a meeting on something if we haven't but, reviewed the document? Okay, I understand. But so you could just vote to not. But my vote is important on this, and so my question is will we have a meeting to review the document? From now to the 15th? Correct. No. So wouldn't that... Okay, so just vote no. Okay, so hands. Okay. One, two, three. Uh, you should probably put everyone's name. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> That seems... Are we allowed to discuss this, or is this just a We should have a discussion. Sure. What? Uh, no, I just, I'm, I have no issue with voting 15th, but I do have questions and concerns related to the document and the overall plan. So. Right. <coughs> so, sorry, so again, I have no problem with voting on the 15th, as this council's job is here to make decisions. Uh, I'm not in favor, yes or no, of a data center at this point, uh, but I do think there's more due diligence that needs to be performed for myself to review. Um, so I'm in, I'm in favor of having the, the meeting, but I do think there's more clarification and review of information in order to have me vote one way or the other. So right. So um, on the 15th, if, if you don't, if you're not going to be ready to vote on the 15th, I would just say you don't want to vote on the 15th. Um, so I mean, we're going to go in there with a with a. He requested us to vote on this this date. We're going to go there with a motion to move it. Yeah, and everyone. I'm not asking if you're going to vote yes. I'm asking if you're going to be prepared to vote on the 15th. Um, and if you are, then vote yes right now. Point of information. Yep. Uh, Mr. Mayor, will Mr. Callahan be present for that meeting? Mr. Burr. I've got to check with him. To, to be, he'll be here later in this meeting, so okay. I can ask him then. All right. Thank you. All right. Councilor Baumgartner. I can step out, Trey. Uh, yes, I, I'd uh, align my remarks with both uh, Councilor Bordelon and, and uh, Councilor McBride. Um, I, I cannot, in good faith, vote uh, on a vote without having reviewed the agreement. Um, with that said, I will note um, I am committed to attending two e meetings that evening, including our personal and appointments committee meeting, where we have uh, several appointments to get through that start at 530. And there is a, a good chance that it will continue on um, past an hour, given uh, the previous meeting. OK. Um, so just want to be prepared for that as well. Um, I want to hear from Councilor Franco and Councilor Westerville. <laughs> Are you calling out both of us at the same time? I'll yeah, let you it's, it's really just consensus, so I just need yes or no, so. I don't need. Can be, actually, we can discuss the contract, ask how, and what's in the post agreement, and then vote. Okay, Councilor So Wilson, I'm in favor, no. thank you. Um, this is Councilor Westervelt. If if I had not seen a document with which to at least read and familiar familiarize myself with, um, then I will not be prepared to vote. Okay. All right. So, just just to point out, Eric, point information. Eric is available. He just texted me. Okay. So the attorney will be there next week. What's your point of information? 
Well, we received the contract on the weekend prior to Tuesday. I think everyone on the council should be in receipt. I mean, if the council wanted to move forward, there's some. Uh, I, I've got a scheduled meeting uh, with uh, Mr. Quinn on Thursday morning to hammer out some more details. I'm not yet satisfied with the language, but we might be able to get through the last issues on Thursday and then get it out. Eric would have to take a quick look. We could have it out on Friday, I'm sure. Okay. So we will receive a clear contract with on Friday. Clear writing with all the updates on Friday then. Thank you. Okay, so Councilor Westerville, are you a no? I'm a no at this time. Okay. That's all I've seen the document. One. Point of clarification. It's going to be there on Friday, but if it doesn't make it, then I would have to say no until I see it. What's your point of clarification? Uh, I just want to double check to make sure I'm understanding this. So, um, as it was stated, if I'm hearing correctly, um, the attorney will be present mm -hmm. and there will be a chance since it's a cow so we can discuss this. That's correct? That's correct. My other point of a clarification though, no public comment on the, the completed document and we're not going to get the document to maybe Thursday after things are hammered out, possibly Friday. Um, and there's not enough time to deliberate really in between there to add or subtract things to get a consensus to add it. So uh, boxing out that is what I'm hearing if I'm clarifying correctly in my mind. No public uh, input on that document and they're not able to have a public hearing um, to you know present it to uh, the public as to what our final document looks like. That will not happen before the 15th. Not with the current process. It's Correct. To the council and so because of that, I would be definitely a no. I think what, what we, we heard, and I won't go on any further. Thank you. Okay, and then Councilman McBride, are you for this? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a yes because I'm okay. under the assumption that the document has been made available to the public. There has been substantial public input and feedback. A revised document will be provided to us on Friday. We'll have the opportunity to review it, make changes to it as needed on Tuesday, and then make a vote. I'm not, you know, I still have a lot of review as well, but I think that gives us ample opportunity and the public has had a time to provide feedback because they've provided us a vast amount of feedback. So I would be a yes in favor of voting because I think that's the job as us as counselors to make those decisions. Okay, so I have the five um, counselors in favor, so that would be consensus. So if, if we understand it right, the document that we might have gotten on the 22nd, we're getting on the 15th. We're just getting it earlier with all the updates. So if otherwise we would have just waited till the 22nd to get the same document. Correct, assuming the okay. council wanted to put it on the 22nd. Right, we don't okay. have to vote on the 22nd either. Right, but if the council wants to. But anyway. Point of clarification, can you just say with how everyone voted on that or their consensus? And also, if that's the thing and you're saying the consensus is five to move forward, um, it, is it possible to add a public comment on that day? You can like add that some, you can have a, a special meeting to allow for that. I think we would be doing well, the okay. no disservice to the community to not have it. Okay, we'll, we'll discuss that um, uh, later on. But but we have, the, we have the consensus from the council to hold a special meeting on the 15th and vote. So that's what we've done. This can is you tell us uh, from my notes how everybody voted, please? Uh, Councilor Franco was in favor. Councilor Parker, Jones, Kassiri, and McBride were in favor. Okay. That's the end of my communications. Okay. Uh, Councilor Jones. Um, received a variety of emails from um, different residents. Um, last week met with um, uh, Councilor Kassiri and the developer and the engineer and toured the, the property and asked them to um, just give us a location. So they walked us to the spot and showed us approximately where the building would be. Um, uh, sitting. On Saturday, we had the coffee with the counselors. And just a thank you to Councillor Franco for putting together a great um, uh, coffee with the counselors. How she set it up worked really well. We had great feedback from uh, neighbors. We were able to listen a lot and get a lot of information. On Sunday, I went with uh, Representative Jacome. We went on a road trip. And we drove to New Jersey and New York and looked at four different data centers um, just to kind of get a comparable of the size the sounds, all that kind of stuff. Just kind of listen to them, just get in my head what they were. But we had a great time driving, uh, good traffic all the way to New York and back. Look at those. Um, and then we walked um, with, the, with the mayor on uh, 
Monday, Wednesday, yesterday, and the town manager uh, looking at the same location. So, thank you. Um, just before Councilor Parker, you have your communications. I'll just note that Councilor Westerville arrived at six thirty-four. Councilor Parker. I received the same communications as all the other counselors, and um, that's all I have. Thank you. Councilor Franco. Thank you. I had talked with the counselors on Saturday. It was a good meeting. We actually set up the, present, um, the meeting with four different tables where residents could come in and speak to us individually. Um, we got a lot of good communications. Um, through people that live right on Flanders Road, and that will be impacted um, by this and what their thoughts were on the matter. And I thank them all for showing up and having great conversations with us. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Westerville. Uh, good evening. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I did receive. Lots of communication, same as everyone focused on Flanders Road is Red Road, all about the data center. So there's a lot of questions still going back and forth on that. Um, additionally, I received a um, SEC percussion ensemble. Um, as the kids haven't been able to meet for quite some time, they did have a performance finally after three months of studying. And the SEC percussion ensemble is made up of students from Fitch, Grosso Tech, Marine Science, and Groton Middle School. Um, there's an upcoming performance on Friday, March 11th, and that's it. Thank you. All right. On to the approval of minutes. can be found on page two. I make a motion to approve the Committee of the Whole Meeting Minutes of February 22nd, 2022. So moved. Second, Parker. Any discussion? All right. Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. First of all, are you voting in favor? I said aye. I'm sorry. Okay. Opposed? Abstentions? That carries unanimously. Nine in favor, zero opposed, zero abstaining. On to new business. Shenacosset rules and regulation rates can be found on page 10. I make a motion to recommend a resolution approving the proposed changes to the Shenacosset Golf Course 2022 rules and regulations rates. So moved. Second, Bumgarner. Moved by Melendez, seconded by Bumgarner. And and Todd and Eric are under panelists. Do you have any questions for them? Okay. We have Director Barry here to give us some background. Good evening, Mark Berry, Director of Parks and Recreation. Annually, the Town Council approves the proposed rates uh, for uh, the peak season at Shenacosta Golf Course. Uh, this process started back in December when the Golf Advisory Board met uh, to have an initial discussion about the rates. Uh, they met again in February, uh, and I also attended another meeting with the Parks and Recreation Commission. It was a joint meeting in February. Uh, they made their proposal and discussed it with the Parks and Recreation Commission, and the Parks and Recreation Commission uh, moved the proposal forward to, to the Town Council. Uh, so when we look at uh, setting the rates, there's a number of things that we look at. Uh, we look at a 10-year history of the rate changes. Uh, we look at the projected budget for FYE 23. We also look at current market rates, and we also uh, weigh in a recommendation from the National Golf Foundation, uh, which completed a study a number of years ago. So, you know, over the last 10 years, we've made adjustments to the day, daily and seasonal pass rates uh, to remain competitive in what was a tightening market. Uh, we have also adjusted rates to incentivize new members and to reflect the larger economic conditions at the time. Uh, the projected budget for FYE 23 uh, is uh, going to increase by 12%. Uh, that's driven by a number of different factors. Uh, so that weighs into uh, the price that we set for or the proposed rates that we have set. Uh, 
we also, again, we look at uh, the local market, you know, why we feel Shanacosset is a unique golf experience. Uh, we do have to be sensitive to what we charge uh, and what other local golf <coughs> courses uh, charge. Um, and based on the current information that we have, Shanacosset has the highest uh, daily fees. Uh, in 2005, the National Golf Foundation uh, did a study of Shanacosset, and one of the recommendations that they made was that we not increase fees uh, over 3% on, on an annual basis to try to reflect what would be a normal uh, cost adjustment. Uh, this year, that's a little bit out of whack with everything that's going on. Uh, so the motion that was passed uh, was to increase the rates by 3% for season pass holders with the exception of ranger rates. Rangers are the folks that work out on the course uh, to keep the pace of play. Uh, it's difficult to get rangers, so we didn't want to uh, increase the burden. We were short on rangers last year. Uh, we didn't want to uh, raise the burden of trying to get, uh, attract rangers to, uh, to play and, and to be rangers. Um, we also are proposing to raise the cart fees. We haven't raised the cart fees in 10 years. Uh, one of the reasons that we're raising, proposing to raise the cart fees is that we're, um, we have a five-year lease program for carts, and this year uh, we're going to be turning the carts in, and the new lease fees are, are higher, uh, so we needed to account for that. Um, so the motion was made by the council, or I'm sorry, by the Parks and Rec Commission and uh, passed on to the council. And I'm here to answer any questions that you might have about the proposed rates. Councilor Jones. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Berry. Um, uh, what is the closest competitor to our, where is our competitors? Where are our competitors? Well, we have a, I've got three or four different competitors. Uh, I think there was a sheet that uh, show the rates of, oh, maybe there was it. Uh, so it's primarily Norwich uh, and Elmridge are a couple of the competitors in the area. And how do our rates compare to their rates? Uh, right now, our daily rates are uh, on the high end. Uh, towards the top, the seasonal rates are, were competitive, maybe a little bit lower than than what they are. Are our costs more than you think Norwich is, or are we a, a better course? What would justify why you would be different than them? Oh, well, yeah, I mean, I think Shinnecosset is uh, unique. Um, you know, it's different than Norwich. Uh, maybe this is a personal bias, but I, I think the course conditions are better. You know, I think Eric does an excellent job. Eric and his staff do an excellent job of uh, maintaining the course. and. Um, I think, yeah, I, I'm not sure that we can actually, you know, we're actually comparing apples and, and apples uh, okay. just because how unique Shinnecosset is. But we do know that golfers, you know, look at look at the price when making a decision about where to play. And, and we're trying to remain competitive. And so during COVID, we had, I think it was an, an increase, right? We were very pop, we were hugely popular during COVID as a... As yes, a <laughs> that is correct. COVID um, has was exceptional for the golf course. Um, we saw a huge increase. We had made some other changes just prior to COVID uh, that also helped, but um, you know, when a lot of places people couldn't get into, they could still play golf. There was a time where Massachusetts, you couldn't play golf at all. Rhode Island, you had to be a Rhode Island resident to play on a Rhode Island course. And uh, you know, we saw 40, 40 to 50 percent of our business at that time was coming from out of state because uh, we, we were any, able to remain open. Did we have any pushback on the rates that we had at that time? No, no, no. People no. are accepting it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Great. Thank you, Councilor McBride. Hi. Thank you. Um, just a couple quick, really, just questions for my own knowledge. Um, Groton residents at the very bottom, I guess, fee discount applies to Groton residents. That's all Groton residents, Groton City, Groton Long Point? Yes. Okay. And for Town of Groton employees, is that all Town of Groton employees, including the city? The discount at the bottom? No, because no, they're not Town of Groton employees. So yeah. it's just the Town of Groton employees, not the city? Right, right. 
and then I was just wondering what was the thought with the youth non-residents um, not being higher than the youth resident? These are more just questions maybe to consider for next year. Sure. Um, so, you know, the youth are the future of golf, and so we just felt like um, not trying to encourage as many youth players, whether they're from Groton or from outside Groton, uh, to come and play is a is a positive. That, that makes sense. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. No, that was all. I just a couple, just a couple questions. Thank you. Yeah. Councilor Bordelon. Um, thank you. Where do our rates uh, align with like Great Neck in Waterford? Oh. Because that's another, I mean, I think we, we spoke of Norwich, but that's an outlier. I was wondering with Waterford, we should kind of yeah, compare with I, two. Because I'm looking up here, I see single rate, 3,800, family, 5,500, associate, 2,050, junior, 750. Um, so I just, I don't know. I mean, I think it'd be helpful in, in future when this comes before us to just add in like a, you know two surrounding golf courses with you know within 10 to 15 miles. Um, sure. I mean, I did some of my own research, but I think it you know it is important to take a look. We are unique, but so aren't they. I mean, they have uh, you know wedding venues, Langley's Restaurant. They have a lot of other attractions and amenities that we don't have at ours. Right, which um, is probably why they're charging more money. Right, um, but then you weigh the option of what ours does have as far as coastal access and other things, then you know, we should you know, kind of fare a little bit better in some other ways. So yeah. just curious to look at those numbers in comparison versus just Norwich. Um, my one question, though, is um, looking down at the bottom here, military, it, I guess that, that's counted as seniors. Um, shouldn't we add the word military up in the season passes then as an actual line? Yeah, we could certainly do that. Because it just, I mean, the fine print a lot of people don't see. And is this active duty military or retiree? Oh, it says active. Right. So um, my, my last question, so yeah, I, I could support this by moving up the military. So what would the military cost be for active duty? Yes. The same as seniors, if I'm reading this correctly? It's just unclear as all. It just should be a little bit more reader friendly to someone who's glancing over it. Sure. Okay. Yeah, we can make that. See how you're having change. to dig for it. It's not, you know, it looks like if the person, if glanced at this, might not know that military had a discount. Um, right. Al also, what about retirees? Eric Morrison wants to say something on this. Okay. Uh, military retirees. Is there a line for that? Not right now. No. So I would like to propose a line. I think it would be nice to see. Um, you know, I think there's seniors and there's also active duty retiree military folks that fall under. I'm willing to, you know, whatever you think is fair, Mark, um, but I think that they should fall on here. I'd like to see the line military added, so it's up front on the top of the flyer, and also, you know, um, retired military have their line as well. Um, but I, I'm not set on a number. I, I would leave it up to you guys to decide. Um, if the senior rate is, uh, uh, 1070 and 1190 for non-resident uh, and the military is going to be the same as that right active duty military is going to be the same as senior then a retired veteran should be on a fixed income maybe a little bit lower uh, I don't know I, I, I think it's kind of skewed is what I was trying to say I almost feel like the active duty military should be a little higher than the senior and then there should be the senior rate and then the retiree military it's just and that's so I find uh, so do I have to put a motion on the floor for yes. an amendment? I, I think Eric uh, might want to amend, you know, the golf Eric course. Morrison. Yeah. But do I have to put my motion down if I want to amend this first yeah. before I move on? Well, yeah. Eric Morrison, do you have something to say? Yeah. I do. Hold on. Good evening. Uh, the way that this currently sits, the star is for the guest fee for daily fees only. Currently, we do not offer discounts to any of those people down below for a season pass. Right. Right. And yes, to amend it, you would have to okay. put a motion. All right. So I'd like to make a motion on the floor. I'd like to keep this as written. I'd like to add a line that says military slash retiree, retired military. Um, and um, I'd be willing to ask for guidance from the two um, well, I'll make my own number then, unless you guys, uh, 
if it's, I guess, 1,070 for a residence. Um, let me just see, the youth is 315, and associate is in season, wait, okay, so that's, so I just wanna make sure I'm reading it right. There's a season rate, am I correct, and a limited rate? Yes, that's correct. So we'd have to make a senior uh, uh, retiree military, active duty military in one line under both. Would that be correct? Yes, the, the okay. limited restricts play to certain times. Okay, so the season pass then, if an adult is, I would, <coughs> in a family, um, I would make it a thousand dollar, like twelve hundred for an adult retiree military on uh, season pass for a resident. So twelve hundred. And I'm open to numbers. If anyone else has anything else they want to put in here, uh, a non-resident, I would put it like fourteen fifty. And then under, I'm sorry. Three percent. Well, they're not they're they're not three percent because this is a new line completely. This, because there's not a line already on here. And then under the limited, um, I would make a th maybe a thousand for the limited. And the, maybe 1100 for the non-resident um, military. I don't know, I'm open to suggestions, Mark, if you have any. I just would like to see since that we are a you know, military community to have that okay. line in there in, in some capacity. I need a second. Perhaps, perhaps it would be best if we, I talked with Eric and Todd and the golf, rather than just throwing out numbers mm. right now, and then so we could come back, I guess. Would you like to come back? Or Not, well, yeah. 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 Okay. There was no second? Right, right. I need a second on this motion. I'll second that, and then I would like to say I would agree with. I mean, it's a great idea what you're coming up with, but I think it makes sense to save time and do the research and come back with the numbers. Yeah, yeah. there's plenty of time to do that. Right? Perfect. Okay. Um, I, I still had a question. Well, Councilor Baumgartner was first. Yes. Um, thank you, and and I I, I would agree with um, Councilor McBride. I just um, want to also make sure that it's in line with the three percent increase so that it's not. Um, but uh, great idea. Um, in terms of the associate membership, I know in within the last four years or so, uh, the council voted to create that new line, uh, similar to what we were uh, discussing, to create a, a, a membership that, so that um, our young folks can, can um, uh, get in on, on the golf course at a, at a discounted rate. And I know every year uh, since uh, that has happened, um, uh, you, Eric, and, and, um, and the team have, have come forward and said that um, it's really paid dividends. There's been an explosion of interest, and um, a, lot, a lot of young people have taken advantage of that. So maybe you could just speak to that. Um, I know there are a lot of new counselors here. Sure. That could speak to some of that history. Yeah, so it was either three or four years ago we created an associate and an associate plus membership. Uh, previously, uh, you, once you turned 20, I think it was 22, you became an adult and you went from paying, um, you know, youth rates to, you know, three or four times what you were used to paying. So um, the National Golf Foundation, you know, talked about some of the barriers to participation for golf and one of them was the cost. And so we came up with the idea of uh, kind of having an intermediate fee uh, for those, uh, the associate and associate plus associate is 22 to 30 and I think the associate plus is 30 to 35 and so we introduced that rate at the time before we had introduced that rate we had I think seven players in that bracket uh, between 22 and 35 uh, I think last year we had 45 so uh, that's been a huge and that was one of the changes that we made that uh, that drove up um, membership at the golf course thank you yeah, and, and the whole idea is if we can get those folks playing uh when they're 23 24 and they've committed to shana uh hopefully we've got them for life i hope so yeah. and, and thank you again yeah. councilor parker okay two questions um one is to councilor borderline's motion Currently, there is no season passes for 
the active military personnel. Is that what I'm reading? That's there. correct, and, and she's proposing that we okay. create those rates. So this would have to go back to the Council Advisory Board as well as to the Parks and Rec Commission before yeah, bringing yeah, this I, forward. Yeah, I think this is going to be a, you know, a, a three-month process, right. unfortunately, because yes, the golf season is starting to, to get cranked up now. And second, um, are we including, um, well, since Juneteenth is another holiday, is that going to be on here too? It's not yet a town holiday, though. It's not a town holiday. No, we're working on it. Yeah. Okay. That's going to be a process for all the unions. But oh, yeah, that's right. Our niece is working on that, that currently. Right. And um, I, I attended one of the meetings, so I knew this was coming. Mm -hmm. And thank you guys for all your work, both groups. Thank you very much. Um, I'm in full support of this, and I understand this is going to take a while to incorporate the changes. And hopefully we can do this before, or we can try to start the process after the fact, and at least get this started, and then look at it down the road. Just a suggestion. Wait, so hold on. I just need a question. So, you, when do you need the, the um, us to vote on this, finalize it, by? Well, I was hoping it would take place tonight. But, right. Um, you know, the golf season, as the weather gets warmer, uh, <coughs> golf season picks up and we have a lot, I don't know the exact number, mm -hmm. we have a lot of members that uh, renew their membership come, right. you know, April. Right. And so, um, you know, April, May, June, it's just constantly new memberships are rolling in. Right. So what you're saying is if we don't approve the increase, like, the, it changes when we approve the increase, but we would be losing money because people would be paying last year's price without the increase yes, if exactly. we don't move on. Right. Okay. Right. Um, and so to research sort of adding this new line, how long would that take you? For, for you to come with recommendations for a military line, yeah. how long would that take you? Well, if we went through the process of getting to where we have the rates now, right. we meet with the Golf Advisory Board. The Golf Advisory Board makes our recommendations to the Parks and Rec Commission. Parks and Recreation Commission, you know, makes a recommendation. Now, the next Golf Advisory Board isn't meeting isn't until April. Okay. So we could, you know, try to arrange a special meeting just to discuss this. And okay. So last question. Mm -hmm. Say we approve as written now here today, can we amend in the middle of the year the rates? Yeah. Well, that, it gets a little tricky because if we've, you know, we've got two or three new rates, somebody signs up that's a retired uh, military right. and they've paid a rate <clears throat> and now, right. you know, they're like, well, hey, you owe me money back. I mean, there's a whole process okay, understood. To, to doing that. Manager Burr? Um, just to, I like, like the idea of adding the the active both both active and retired military up to the uh, season passes. I'd recommend this year you added with the senior citizen with direction to do further research and propose something for next year. Okay, hold on one second. Okay, uh, Councilor Parker, are you done? Yes. Okay, Councilor Franco. Actually, before you speak, Eric, did you have something to say? I do. Okay. Uh, just a suggestion on numbers. We're offering the military the guest fee for daily fees. You could offer military the resident fee for the season pass instead of the non-resident pass. Just a possibility. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Councilor Franco. Thank you. I was just going to suggest something of the same or similar and potentially change the word from maybe adult economy, put an asterisk in there and call that adult slash guest fee discount or something of that nature where it comes to the um, season passes. Um, just a suggestion, um, but I would also be in favor of allowing the town to review this and come back to us next year and passing what they proposed today and having them research it for next year with our input. Thank you. Okay, Councilor Kasiri. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Barry, would you recommend us passing this tonight in the interest of the golf course and the Parks and Rec budget? I would. Um, but I'd like the suggestion of, you know, using the adult or the senior citizen uh, rate right. uh, and apply that uh, resident rate and apply that towards the um, retired military. Um, I'm not so sure about the active military, what that rate should be. Um, but it's certainly timing wise, the longer we wait, the potential okay. for lost revenue uh, exists. Right. So would you recommend us potentially having you research this for next year and just passing this today? Since we're getting into golf season and yeah. I, I, that would be the ideal situation, but it certainly doesn't address what no. Councillor uh, Bordelon has brought up. So. I am definitely in favor of you researching it for next year, but since we're getting into the beginning of golf season, I would recommend, I would encourage councillors to pass this as is today. Thank you. Okay. Um, Councillor Bordelon. Uh, thank you. Um, I can support moving it forward. military on here somewhere as it is for now and then we can uh, go into more detail later but I do think we need to start thinking like that as a community I mean this golf course has been in existence for a while and folks can say today that you know it's kind of last minute or not but the military have been here and are the you know with with EB and, and everything here it's something that should be on our for or for, uh, you know on our minds my other point would also be some collaboration with the um, the rec uh, facility on the naval base to let them know that we're going to have these rates coming as well so they can advertise and bring in the folks on um, the non -res non resident versus resident um, I, I think uh, you know there's a lot of military that are residents so but for now I think you know let active duty and retiree come in at the senior rate and that would solve it for now and we can look at it later I do I have seen other fees and other towns amended later in the year so you, you could um, we could pass this as written and state that um, effective in like three months we're proposing a uh, military and a um, retiree rate that's kind of a nice thing and you can say that there will be no back adjust adjustments on that you can word that as such um, I've joined many clubs and didn't get the back fee so you could add that and say moving forward um, also it's nice to bring in some new rates in the middle of the year it might spike uh, and spur some folks from the naval base to come on so I can support writing this as written but I would I, I think it would be important to kind of move on this quick I don't think we have to wait until next year we can just let folks know if they're active duty or retiree that the rate that they're under now um, won't change if it you know comes out later in the year um, but I, I, I do encourage that so yeah if it's stated as a senior rate let's make it the senior rate okay so I guess I'll, I'll make the motion I'll make a motion to um, make the senior citizen season pass under limited read senior citizen slash military second borderline uh, Councilor Jones um, just a, a question, would that be both for active duty and retired? Yes. So we do the same on both of those? Yeah. Um, Mr. Mayor, that was a great idea, putting it on the senior citizen. It makes it pretty easy. We can move forward with this. Do you have any sense of how many military personnel come to? No. Uh, Todd Goodhue, uh, he might be able to answer that question. He's the golf pro and kind of sees all of the registrations, mm -hmm. or the season memberships that come in. It be nice, might be nice yeah. just to kind of get a he sense is, of how many uh, military do come, just to... Does he have that? Oh. I'm sorry, did you call on me? I, didn't, I couldn't hear you. No, I was uh, hoping that Todd Goodhue might be able to answer the question about the number of military that are season pass holders, either active or retired. There I go. Boy, a little difficulty on the computer thing. Um, I'm sorry, Mark, I could barely hear you. Say again, what is the question? Uh, the, the question is, do we have any sense of the number of either active or retired military season pass holders? Anecdotally, I can say that probably we have uh, 20 folks that uh, currently join 
under the senior category. Uh, just to um, go back a bit, uh, we do, when, when we check in folks, we always ask a group that's coming in if they're um, police, fire, uh, first responders, military, former military. We've always taken that, we've always given the discount uh, to those folks who are our former military. But as far as your question goes, um, probably around 20 mark. So which discount are we currently giving already? <laughs> in, the, in the daily, the guest fee. In the fees. daily. The See daily. the guest fee, 42 okay. rather okay. than 42. So that's what, that's what we're currently doing is we're giving, a, we're already doing this. For the daily. For Not the daily. And we're talking about season right. pass. We've, so we're just going to move it to the season pass. Right. That's right. what we're doing. Okay. All right. So it would include a discount for, okay. for both. All right. I'm fine with that. Thing. that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Franco. So if you are retired military, active military, and we change the senior citizen to where it says guest fee slash senior, then we check ID and we, then we will charge depending on if they're residents of Groton or non-residents and apply that pricing. Is that correct? That's what I would propose. So that both resident and non-resident right. are okay. Residents so, would go under this, and non-residents would go under that. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. Resident military retired and active would be one thousand seventy, and non-resident non military would yeah. be eleven ninety. Yeah. Depending on if they live in our town. Right. 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 So seeing that there's approximately twenty that come in through the year. I think this would have minimum impact then, and and it might even be pretty minimum if whether they sign on for a season pass. All right, thank you. Good information. Thank you, Councilor Baumgartner. Yes, uh, thank you again, Eric, for um, your initial uh, suggestion. Um, definitely saved a lot of time this evening, and um, just want to thank you and, and Todd and uh, obviously Mark for the great work you're doing at the golf course. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that um, when I'm out of town, um, all I hear is, wow, you, you guys have um, one of the, if not the best, um, uh, municipal golf courses in the state. So keep doing what you're doing. Thanks for your work. I just have a point of clarification um, on my notes. When he said 20 under the senior rate, that was 20 seniors, not necessarily military. Is that correct? Uh, I thought he, he meant 20 military. I was confused. Yeah, yeah unless he misunderstood my question. Yeah, I just want to make sure my notes are correct. Okay. Todd, can you... Can and what I was saying, anecdotally, of course, we, we don't track that. Okay. But anecdotally, if, if you were asking me how many of those folks who typically join under the senior class of membership, I would say it's probably around 20. Yeah, I don't think that was 20, the question. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Todd... Yeah. Folks who are hired military. The, Todd, the, the question was out of the 354 members that we have, how many are you aware of that are either active or retired military? I couldn't tell you, I couldn't guess. Okay. So we don't know. But, if, but in the category of senior, which many of those folks do now, the senior category is a limited play category, it's a Monday through Friday category. And so uh, if there are retired folks that choose to be a full member with weekend privileges in the morning, uh, then that would that would be different. But but uh, being that we don't ask for IDs and we don't have any need to do that, I'm only going on on the folks that I come in contact during the week, during the day, um, who I happen to know uh, are are retired military because we talk about it. I former military. And so, so we do talk about right. military and, um, and just issues to, and so forth. And just to clarify on this, if you are military, uh, you could still choose to get the adult rate and season pass and not be limited to weekdays. You just have the you have this extra option of buying a limited um, season pass 
at the senior citizen rate, but then you'd be limited to weekdays. Correct. Right. Okay. Just a point of clarification. So we're leaving it as, as that for now, and we're not going to come back mid-year to do any adjustments for season passes non-limited? We're going to wait till next year? Is that the plan? You tell it's the yeah, council's, we, we, the council's we have to making the decision. Yeah, we have to make the, the amendment. Councilor Kassiri? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, my question was just going to be, are you comfortable with us setting this seasonal pass rate for active military and retired military? Um, yeah, given that we don't know the impact, um, you know, it's something that we'll have to track and, and see what happens over the course of the next year. And if, you know, we end up picking up more retired and active military or, you know, we lose, uh, lose revenue, um, you, you know, we'll just, we'll have to track that and okay. see, uh, yeah. see what happens. Uh, Mr. Mayor, will we need a motion in order to consider Parks and Rec looking into changing this in three months, or can you just take direction from the council, Mr. Barry? Okay, um, so. I can give them direction to do that. So. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, Councilor Parker. How many motions do we have on the floor? Right now we have uh, the main motion and two amendments. Could you repeat the, the, yeah. repeat the amendments for me, please? Okay. So the amendment that we will vote on first is under the season passes limited, the line that says senior citizen will say senior citizen slash military, military will be defined as active or retired. Um, and again, that's a limited, so this is limited to weekdays, weekdays only. If you are military, you still have the option to buy the full adult pass and be able to plan the weekends. So that's the first, uh, am uh, first amendment. The second amendment was Councilor Bordelon's amendment. It was 1,200, it was adding a line, uh, military on the season pass up top, 1,200 for resident, 1,450 for non-resident. And then on the limited, a thousand and eleven hundred on a whole other line. I would be willing to, I'd be willing to pull that off if if the town manager is going to send that as suggestion, so that the season pass and limited pass add those lines in there, you know, as per direction and time. So and stick with what we have. I think sure. it's a start in the right direction, and I could I'd be fine with that, with the intention that we're going to advertise to the recreation department on the naval base to let them know that we have this option available as well. Yeah, I yeah. will so direct. I so to... just keep in mind, those three months is the goal, but, you know, yeah. somebody in the committee might right. want more info or whatever else. So <laughs> I, I'll retract that motion. It happens sometimes. So they can work on it. Um, if, you're, if you're rescinding the second person that mo second your motion needs to rescind to, please. Um, I'll rescind my second. Okay. All right, so we got one amendment on the floor. Councilor Franco? Wait, actually, hold on one second. We're going to vote to amend the motion, and then we have to vote on the motion. Right. And also, it was just mentioned by a councilor that the town manager would have direction from that one councilor, and we, normally we don't, um, as individuals, make um, request to the town manager to move on something unless the council as a whole would direct in that. In that. So I think that's for, for the council to decide and not just one councilor to make a direction. I, Thank I think you. My, my feeling was that most of the council was in favor of looking at that, so that's why I went ahead and said we'd do it. Okay. So, so is it the consensus wrong. of the council <laughs> to come back in three months with yes. one, two, three, four? Five. Okay, I have five councilors. All right. Okay, so see no more discussion. I'll call for a vote. And this, we are voting on just the amendment, just to add military uh, to the senior citizen line of limited. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? That carries unanimously. Nine in favor, zero opposed, zero abstaining. Now we have to vote on the rates as amended. So the main motion as amended. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? 
That carries unanimously nine in favor, zero opposed, zero abstaining. Thank you, Director Barron. Well, we're actually not done yet. We have to do the rules and regulations. Ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> yeah. You're correct. <laughs> so we, we went through the same process with the rules and regulations. The Golf Advisory Board looked at them twice, made some recommendations. The motion was passed. It went to the Parks and Rec Commission. They reviewed it and uh, directed me to bring this to the commission or to the council. Sorry. So the, the changes are noted in, I think, red. Yeah. They are. Although I don't have a they are. color they are. copy. Question. What's the question? Council Jones. My my question is do we need on part D number seven to add military on the end of senior citizen? If we're putting it on the pricing sheet. Shouldn't it also be in the rules? Well, I think we would just add a, another line. Another section? Yeah. Just add another section. Another letter and defining it. But actually, um, <laughs> we have to put another motion on the floor. The, the motion I put was supposed to actually, we were supposed to vote on them together, but I don't think that was clear to anyone. So, um, changes to the Shenacosset Golf Course Regulation uh, Rule, 2022 rules. Second. Bumgarner. Okay. Moved by Melendez, seconded by Bumgarner. And now I would ask my question, right? Yeah. 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 So the, the question is on that, do we need to just add a military line in there? The same as sort of senior citizen. Yes, we would add, uh, it would pretty much be the same language. Uh, we wouldn't make reference to the age, um, but it would say, uh, well, let's see, let's see. It would say play restricted to weekends and weekends and holidays after 12 p.m., unrestricted play before April 1st and af after October 31st. So it'd be like eight, and then eight becomes nine? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do we need a motion for that? So I will, I will make a motion to add into the Shenacosset Golf Course Regulations Part D. Um, we'll add a, a new number eight that reads uh, military, retired, and active. And the language uh, picked up from the one above, play restricted on weekends. Weekdays and weekends and holidays after 12 p.m. Unrestricted play before April 1st and, at, and after October 31st. And then number not eight, current M number eight, limited family becomes number nine. Second. Okay. okay. Amendment by Bruce Jones and seconded by Councilor Parker. Okay. Council Warlong. Uh, thank you. So when we're looking back at uh, over the next three months to revise the the level of play um you'll also look at ways to amend that in the rules as well more defined under season and limited and propose that back to us as well yes so, uh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay perfect thank you all right see no other discussion i'll call for a vote on the amendment of adding um a paragraph defining military, active, and retired. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. aye. And there's a delay. Uh, abstentions? <laughs> <laughs> that carries unanimous to nine in favor, zero opposed, zero abstaining. Okay, now to vote on the rules as a whole, as amended. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions that carries unanimously nine in favor, zero opposed, zero abstaining. Right. Now, thank you. If we just took that, I thought. Thank you. Thank you, Mark.
Okay, on to Native American wood carving. And we have Councilor Franco to give us some background on this. Thank you. I uh, brought this referral forward because it come to my attention from Mr. Um, Mr. Allen, who did, who was a reporter, did a piece on the Native American sculpture that was previously at the Grant on Public Library. Um, the sculpture was created by artist Peter Toth, who has built um, a sculpture in each of the states in America and some in other countries. Um, it has come to my attention that the piece is located at the Mystic Village, um, wrapped in plastic, and it is deteriorating. And I am asking the council to please um, give me your support and give uh, the town support to go forward and to investigate if we can bring this back um, financially, if the piece can physically be brought back. Um, and also, in this process, um, check with the, the tribal communities and see if they are in favor of us bringing this back to our community. Um, and this is why I'm bringing it forward, to see if there is support from the council to move forward on this. Um, because I think this was a very special sculpture and was very focal point in our town and many people in our community have great memories of seeing this and and would probably like to see it put back in our community. So I'm here today asking you, our council, for your support to take the next step um, in this process. And if you are in favor and we get this information back, then we could go for the further steps and figure out funding, how we would do that, where we would place it, how we would place it, how would we choose a place, and those would come later. But first, let's do the, the preliminary step of can can we do this? And um, do you support um, investigating that? So I will open, bring it back to the mayor, and it, hopefully we can open up the floor and we can have discussion. Thank you. Okay, Councilor Parker. In looking at the background, it seems that the town relinquished ownership of the statue, and I remember it being deteriorating when it was here at in front of the library. That's one of the reasons why it was taken <coughs> down, because it got infested. And yes, I, my concern was to make ensure that the tribal nations under knew that we were bringing this back, since at one point we ask permission to do something in the town on behalf of their chief. So I just want to ensure that we're gonna do the proper steps of everything and find out, do we have to pay for this? I mean, buy it back from whoever owns it now. To, it used to be in front of the library, so we can't use the library anymore because we have the memorial right there. So where else are we gonna put this item? So just a few things, questions. Um, I don't want to vote on moving forward until we find out this information. I'd rather have the information up front before we make a decision about doing something and how much is it going to cost us overall. Technically, we don't own it anymore. Thank you. Right. Okay. So um, just a question for Councilor Franco. Are you just sort of looking for the consensus from the, at this point, for consensus for the council to um, have the manager look into whether we'll have to buy it back, how much it will cost, where it will be placed, and, and stuff like that? I'm asking um, for the town manager to look into the cost of repairs, if it can be repaired, and if the um, tribal communities around us are in favor of us bringing this back to Groton. Um, and then the next steps will come later as location, um, how would the funds be raised? Things of that nature would come later. Just okay. Is there enough support for it to go forward for the town manager just to do this initial investigation for us? Okay, thank you. Councilor Bordelon? Um, thank you. Um, I'm in full support of looking into this uh, to an extent, obviously wondering what the cost was. When uh, I, I remember 
bringing this up at the time when the sale came before us, and we were looking at the funding for the um, the, the summary memorial the sale that's going to come out here at the Groton, and I said, how is it going to be funded? Are we going to keep up with it and make sure it doesn't deteriorate like the statue that used to be there of the Native American Indigenous folk statue that was there? And at that time, John Burt had stated that he didn't know much about that statue. It was before his time. And a few other people had spoke that it had rotted and maybe got infested and kind of wilted away. Since then, I had done some research on the back end prior to this coming forward. And I, too, had located it at the actual the seaport is where I found it. Um, wrapped in plastic, I have the picture. The gentleman had passed, and I was still looking. Coming to find out, I believe it's Chris Regan's uncle, and so I'm not sure who technically owns the statue now by right of, 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 you know, of, of ownership. Um, and when Chris Regan was contacting us regarding other matters with the town, he had stated that he was shocked that it was there and was very interested. His uncle had collected a lot of things. So um, I definitely think it's worth looking into. I don't know what the cost would be, if it even is at being able to be repaired. Um, and the same concerns as if we couldn't repair it then and we didn't keep up, with it, keep up with it, bringing it back now, we'd have to have a strong committee to make sure that it, you know, this didn't happen. To Councillor Parker's point about making sure you know the indigenous uh, people as well as native folks, um, they the artists from the research I had done spoke to all the areas and got their okay on the designs. So each state that he put these in, he got the welcoming and okay from them initially. So um, as long as we, I would assume we didn't alter it, but I'd love to have, I agree, have them on board to be a part of the process. But I do remember this statue purposely being placed in a certain location in each town based on the sun and other reasons why um, this particular artist wanted to put it there. So again, when the sale had come up, to go in that same location area and the deterioration. This was something that I had brought, brought up, and um, so I'd be willing to help investigate further. I already have some notes that I've done, and I mean, I, we're already talking to Chris Regan, so I'm sure we can talk further with him about what it would, what it, what it would be to bring it back. So I think from an investigation with no funding at this time point, I'm in support of looking into it and seeing uh, uh, what it would take. But. Council Jones. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. A uh, question for Town Manager Burt. Do we have staff, people that can sort of make this kind of determination? Where would we get the information to sort of even I'll begin probably to have to run it down. All right. It might be a little bit of time before I have time to do it. Is it something that we would need to pay money for to have somebody make sort of an initial assessment that then we can make well, another let assessment? Look, let me look into it a little further okay. first. Okay. I'm, I'm in favor of just finding out more information about it and what it's need to be done so Councilor McBride thank you I'm in, I'm in favor of moving this forward uh, to next steps so where I would highly encourage uh, reaching out to the Native American community uh, to make sure they're fully aware of this and and the history that you speak about is is in fact valid uh, I did a lot of research on this as well and um, you know there was a piece of information that I also read that indicated these carvings quote resemble natives of the region in which they are located end quote and therefore I think a conversation with both Native American tribes and other Native American tribes to make sure that this is in fact true is the first point that we should pursue before doing any substantial work on looking at the cost or any other factors so uh, just to make sure they're up to speed and we're following that Grant has a, a rich history with Native American tribes as we can tell with the, the, the various roads and the parks that are named so I think that would be the first order of business in my opinion Thank you. Okay. Well, I definitely think there's consensus. I've had for you know you looking into it and bringing back some some more information. So I think that's sort of what we set out to do here today. What's the question? Um, for the town manager, if this was something that we decided to move forward with and it is repairable, how would we move forward to make sure, I know with the Grot sale that's going in the same location where this was, um, and we have the owl out here that needs you know, a coating on it as well. Um, I know some folks were upset about that and started deteriorating because that owl is also by the same artist, I believe, or possibly carved by the same person. I'm not 100% on that, but if I remember back, I think that wooden owl out there at the library is. 
do we need to start allocating funds for these types of things and how do we make sure we're keeping up with maintenance to come because it's one thing to resurrect something mm -hmm. but it's another of to making sure that they're going to be maintained as this one was you know way before you know obviously your time but the sale that's going up um, actually part of the fundraising that they had done has the money in there to make sure the repairs are with it so if we do all the investigation work and we pay the money to get it up what's the what type of back-end plan do we have for these types that's of things? what we'll have to come up with as part of that right and do we have that the folks on our staffing or no, not or? what has to be done you know does that have to be contracted out well, right i can't say tonight we'll have to look into it right so that that would be my other part of the investigation is what's the long-term plan for these type of artifacts you know and things uh art pieces uh you know the maintenance um, i think that's an important piece of the whole puzzle as well thank you thank you councillor Baumgartner. yes um and, and thank you for some of that background knowledge um councillor mcbride um i would note that the sculpture um was gifted by Mr. Toth, um, not just to the town of Groton, but to, I believe, the 70 something other um, uh, locations throughout the US. Um, I believe there was a sculpture uh, gifted to uh, communities in every single state in the United States, including uh, Alaska and, and Canada. Um, so um, there are many that are still standing, and unfortunately, as Councillor uh, Parker stated, the elements uh, got the best to it. but. I think it would uh, speak volumes if we could uh, re we could uh, um, restore the statue and um, find a, a suitable location, obviously, with consultation with our uh, surrounding tribes um, who are the stewards of, um, you know, have, were long uh, the stewards of this land before uh, we were. So um, with that, I, I would just note that we consult uh, not just with the Meshtucket Pequot uh, tribe, but also the Mohegan tribe, the Eastern Pequots. Um, and um, I, uh, I thank uh, Councillor um, Franco for making this referral and, and certainly Councillor Bordelon for uh, bringing this up uh, some time ago. Thank you again. Councillor Franco. Yes, thank you. I, I had also read that some of these sculptures that are located in, you know, states across the U.S., some are now valued in the millions of dollars. Um, so as somebody who's, you know, been, you know, brought forward the beautification committee, this also adds to the artwork in our community, which I think is, um, we lack. And this would benefit us as a community with more artwork and bringing back that special piece of sculpture back to our community. Um, and I thank all of you for your interest and consensus of bring, moving this forward. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Manager Bird, do you have what you need? Mm -hmm. All right. On. Oh, Councilor Parker. Does this include you checking into the ownership? Yeah. Yeah, and actually, I've been texting with Chris Regan now to start that conversation. Thank you. Council Borlaug? Uh, yeah, also, too, could you check? Because some of the notes that I came across is that we kind of, like, threw it away. Mm. And it was sent off to the dump, and I believe the... I don't know if it's the final owner that currently has it now or maybe one previously. They just took ownership of it because it was just being dumped, is my understanding from people that I talk to, older folks in the area. So it was kind of like... This thing's deteriorated. It's like going off to the dump, and someone said, "No, I'll take it." And so, uh, like maybe there's some history in the town that you can maybe from Parks uh, Public Works to find out, because I think we kind of relinquished our ownership by dumping it from you know not keeping up with it. So, yeah. Chris thinks if we had a plan for maintaining it and all that, that it probably wouldn't be an issue. But I mean, they have the ownership right now, period, because they have they right. have it. <laughs> right, 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 right. All right. So moving on to town-owned property reuse evaluation process can be found on page 19. So there's no motion required here, but I'll read the, uh, the little blurb here. Mayor Melendez is creating a temporary council property reuse subcommittee to complete a draft policy on the reuse of excess town properties and recommend it to the town council members to be appointed by the mayor. The committee will be bound by all Freedom of Information Act requirements with a committee member providing complete draft minutes to the town manager's office after each meeting. Town staff will not be required to attend the committee other than to respond to questions asked by the subcommittee 
though the town manager may occasionally have a staff member attend. So basically, uh, in your packet, this first page here is our current process on page 20. Um, and on page 21 through 23 was the uh, sort of draft ordinance that went through uh, public hearing last term. Uh, no vote has been taken on it, so this will have to go through the calendar council like normal. But um, there was some pushback at public hearing, so I feel this is not completed yet, and I just want, I just think it would be much more efficient and effective to have a working group on this, um, work out all the, the the problems with it and bring it back to, to, to the cow for final approval. So basically I'm just looking for volunteers um, to serve on this. Councilor Bordelon? Yeah, so is this satisfying my recommendation to form a working group to handle this? Is that I had asked under like a referral to, I thought we didn't have enough time, so would this be right. kind of the, and then you guys, and then whoever's on that committee can also bring others in. For instance, Kathy Chase uh, reached out to me today. She'd like to be involved in it. I'm sure there'll be plenty of others. So we're opening it up to RTM as well? It's whatever. Ooh, right. He's appointing four council members. I think you're leaving it up to them, is my understanding. Right. Uh, Where, whoever you want to bring in. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, so okay. So I'm going to ask for volunteers, whoever wants to be on it. it similar to what we did for um, Complete Streets. Um, and Councilor Bumgarner sort of took uh, head of that. He decided how he wanted that composition to be. Um, so if anyone's interested in sort of serving on this, um, then I'm, I'm assuming we shouldn't have more than four. So if we've got four or three, you know. Councilor Parker? No, uh, no, no, I'm just thinking three would be better. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Okay. Councilor Franco? Oh. So normally what we have is the town staff work on these type of things and they bring it to the council and the council then decides in which direction to go. So are we replacing town staff now with a committee? Is that how it is? Because this sort of looks like the layout of what the town staff would normally do where they would check and see if there's any functions, like municipal function. Would, if we were looking at, let's just say, for example, Claude Chester, they might look at the building and say, well, can the, you know, the municipality use this building? Or um, what are the foreseeable uses by the town department? I mean, are they going to have to then go to the town staff and ask them for all this information? Right, so um, I guess the way it would work is, they would have their meetings, sort of like how we do rules. They would go through it, change all the things that they want. Obviously, before they present it to the cow for final approval, the town staff can look over to see if there's anything that is not possible. Um, and uh, Manager Burt? And just say, if, if a question came up where you're not certain if it's you know, during the process, it's better to figure it out during the right. process. Right. So what is the benefit of having it, this committee than what we currently have? Um, I think it's more efficient in terms of uh, staff time. I think we, the council sort of decides what goes in this. So instead of the staff trying to guess what the council wants, bringing it to us, then we say we don't want this. We want this instead going back, like we went back and forth a couple times last term. I just think it would be a much more efficient process if we sort of set up a subcommittee of people who are really interested in this. They they work out what they think is best, so, you know, uh, make sure that it's all legal on the up and up, and then we send it to the cow, just like we do the rules. Is, is there some major problem in this that's, um, that's lacking uh, from where it sits right now? What's, uh, what's it, missing? I, I mean, I, I just think people wanted to make oh, a deep dive. Point right. Order. What's the point of order? Council Franco has the floor. You technically interrupted. Sorry. <laughs> Council Franco? I'm sorry. So then it, it's saying that this committee would also, just correct me if I'm wrong, when I'm going through it, it says that the committee would also check for other things such as 
um, if it's suitable for road or drainage improvements. Is that correct? I mean, are those, is that correct? Uh, where are you seeing that? Um, it's on my page 21. The committee will seek input from relevant departments, town of ground agency, boards and commissions and entities. It's, it's number two. And, it, and it's like one of the questions on there is like, would it be the property be suitable for roads and drainage improvements? I think that's why these type of things are sort of with the town at the moment, because there's, there's some in-depth things in here that I don't know how much a committee, how much they're going to be researching to go Right, so I mean, you have you have sort of a a document like in like a fin. Th this could be a finished document. Now, people wanted to do a deep dive. I don't think that it's the best way to do it in the cow is essentially what I'm saying. I just want three volunteers to come look this over, see what they want to change. The cow can 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 reject the changes um, that are brought forward. So, correct me, we're, what we're passing tonight is the process, or are we passing tonight, we're creating a committee to look at the process? There's actually, there's actually no vote. I'm sort of just creating this thing, and then I'm asking for volunteers to serve on it. But yes, it's not the process. It's the, the committee is being formed, that's it, to look into changing this draft ordinance that we went through public hearing last term. That's all that's happening. So you're not asking us if you can create a committee, is that what Right, no. That, so, right. then what are you asking us? I'm just asking for volunteers. <laughs> Point of information. Yeah. I think part of what's confusing is the committee is actually looking at the process, right. correct? Right. Okay, I think that's where it's getting lost right. in translation. Okay, so do you understand? So you're just looking for volunteers. You're creating this committee and you don't need our approval. Right. And as of right now, I have no okay, volunteers. Okay, interesting. Thank you. Okay, Councilor Jones. <coughs> um, so, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, sorry, Councilor Franco. Um, so my question is, is there a major problem in here that's, that people have picked up that there's something, this could be passed tonight, I mean, if it was fine, but, Am I sensing that there's a problem in here? This isn't complete and um, it needs more work? I don't think there was a problem. It went through public hearing and then we sort of just debated it a lot. And uh, I think we realized, sorry, I think we realized the importance of this and wanted to make sure it's done correctly and spend some good time with it, which isn't really, it's not really the time in the cow to do that. Right, right. right. I, I, this is essentially moving all the discussion we would have in the cow to a committee like we would do the rules. So we would do, like, we we'd set up a temp rules to look over all the rules, do things so that we don't have to spend all that time doing that in the cow. I just think that's a more efficient way of doing it. Um, so. Though it will come back to cow the way yeah. it's being, right. The, the cow has to pass it. Right, exactly. Okay. 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 Council Bordelon. Um, the way that I'm understanding it is basically you're not undermining the staff as John is saying that it would be helpful because as the meeting that I went back and reviewed before this when we were reviewing it the first time was that they were asking us the council what do we want in this mm -hmm. and we couldn't do that in a meeting without being here really late and so this is the opportunity to pick it apart have other counselors even if the committee only has three people on it or four whatever it is anybody can attend we could ask a town staff if they're available for questions but no we're not going to be the experts on road drainage and all of that we're just like taking what the community wanted mm -hmm. and helping put those ideas as a council into a document and then the town staff are going to review it but we're not like undermining or taking away their authority they're asking us to help them because they heard from the community that People didn't like their process, and council didn't get it to the end. So bringing it here allows us, I mean, to sit and pick this apart at a cow would take forever, because everyone wants to adjourn it, you know, at certain times. So we, there's not enough time unless this was its only agenda item. So breaking it down into a group where we can sit down paragraph by paragraph, line by line, 
and see and look for input. We can email staff. I'm sure John, I don't know, can we email you to ask questions? Um, town staff don't have to attend hit states, but they can. Um, I think it's a nice way to just kind of work on a document that represents what the council may want or decisions uh, without trying to rush it through with limited discussion time and uh, time restraints on folks that you, you, can't, you can't do it in this type of meeting. So we need, a, we need a working group to work through the document. And that's what I'm hearing. So I, I think it's, I'd be willing to help uh, any way I could. Okay, so are you volunteering? I volunteer to help. Okay, so that's one. Um, Council West, uh, Westfeld, did you have a hand? Yes, I had my hand up and uh, Councilor Cassari cleared it up and then uh, Councilor Bordelon just added more information to that. So it is my understanding that we're just reviewing the process to streamline it and make sure that it's clear and I will volunteer for that. Okay, thank you. Councilor McBride. Yes, thank you. I, I actually want to say that I think this is a great idea. I think in, in my time for the past few months being here, I feel like the, we could be more efficient. I think the, the uh, committee to hold meetings sometimes aren't as efficient as possible. And I think creating committees such as this, which are not the formal permanent committees that you have set up, but more like an ad hoc committee that other organizations have, I think this is a step in the right direction uh, to create ad hoc committees for whatever we need. These items that we're working on are they're very detailed. There's a lot of work that needs to be involved in, and the, I don't think the Cal provides enough opportunity to dig into the details that we need. So I'm fully supportive of this ad hoc committee, and I'd be willing to volunteer for it as well. Thank you. All right, thank you. So I've got three volunteers. Who is the third? Uh, Westerville, Bordelon, McBride. Oh, we did volunteer. Okay. Thank you. All right, so moving on. And thank you for the volunteers. Approving amounts of bonds to be issued in fiscal year ending 2022 can be found on page 24. I'll make a motion to uh, uh, recommend a resolution to approve the amount of bonds to be issued in FYE 2022. Kasiri, second. Moved by Bumgardner, seconded by Kasiri. And we have Director Landry here. Yes, she's on. I just wanted to point out on page Good evening, everyone. <laughs> um, before I begin, I wanted to know there was one correction on my attachments. Um, in your packet on page 27, section C, the very last line of that top table um, says estimated debt service for fiscal year 2032. That should say 2023. Just wanted to point that out to everyone. Thank you. So some, for some of you, this referral, um, you've seen it a number of times. This is uh, will be our fourth bond issue for the school project. Hopefully this is going to be, uh, it's anticipated this is, will be our last issue of bonds. We will be also issuing notes in April, and it's anticipated that those notes um, in April of 23 will be paid for um, with grant revenue we expect to receive from the state. But for those of you um, who this may be new, the, um, this project went to referendum in um, um, November of 2016 for $184,500,000 project. The three schools have now been completed. They are all in service. So we will be going to market um, for a bond amount of $22,975,000. And we will be issuing notes of $13,255,000. Attached to my referral is the standard um, debt impact information that we provide. Um, section A just gives you the original um, authorization. Previous bond issues we have had of $58 million, the current issue of 22.9. So we anticipate total bonding of $80.9 million. And uh, section B just gives you for the 22.9, the impact on the mill rate for the life of the bonds and the cost on $100,000 of assessment. And moving on to section C, this is a recap of existing debt, um, existing town debt and the proposal of the percentages per the state's policy um, debt limit, as well as the council's own policy. And the bottom section just gives you the breakdown of all the current and proposed bonds by the type of bond that we've issued in the past. You will see that from the um, 
about the middle of section C, you will see that we are at 15.8 and of the um, and then the 31% limit is, is the council's limit. And the continuing on, this just gives you another debt, um, a recap of existing debt. And this is just pound debt. It does exclude any sewer district, sewer district debt or sewer operating fund. The middle column shows you the amount of debt service we're anticipated for the 22.9 million. And the third column gives you the existing debt plus the proposed debt for next month. And then the column with the um, change in the debt service. And the next is just a graph of the difference between the existing debt and the new proposed school. Just gives you a little different snapshot of that. Um, so I will, uh, I'm open to questions, hopefully that I can answer if anyone has any. Council Jones. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, thank you, Director Landry. Can you just tell me, I notice this is 0.32 on the mill rate for this bond. What is the, uh, what is, um, how much does the, the debt that we currently hold add to our mill rate? Or how much of the mill rate is based on debt? Oh, mm -hmm. let me see if I brought that information. I'm not sure that may be the one thing I did not bring. Mm. Well, the currently one mill based on the new is about $4.5 million. And I, do, I did not equate that to the mill rate. If possible, I can get you that information tomorrow. Sure. I just was sort of interested in how much of the current budget in the mill rate that we have is, I mean, it is, is 91 to 114 million is the, would be the total current debt that we would carry. Is that right? I didn't, I missed the beginning of your question. So the, the, this is adding 22, basically $22 million of right. debt on top of the $91 million that we have. So basically equals $114 million of debt that the town carries a million Total debt, yes, that is including all of the sewer debt. You see the sewer It's all the sewer debt, correct. No, yes, I see that. So, I mean, so it's approximately one half, 119. It's probably seven, fifty, okay. Yeah, just, much, just the number. How much 114 is equivalent to in the mill rate? Yeah, or how much of our debt, how much of our mill rate is wrapped up into debt? And I did not bring that calculation with me. I apologize for that. I mean, you can almost figure it out from here. Okay. 50. Yeah, no, I, when you get a chance, that's fine. It's well, just general I'll get that interest. To you. Yeah. Huh? You can just eat that's it. What is, I'm sorry, is, is, is that Councilor Jones? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yep. Councilor McBride. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Cindy, thank you for this information. Just had a couple of quick questions, really, for my own understanding and knowledge, uh, just getting into the budget season. The first question I have was the reimbursement rate on these projects. I was wondering what that is, uh, if you happen to know that at all. Or is it something you can get back to me on? I'm just trying to figure out how we, you know, how we ended up with 80 million of the 189 from the reimbursement rate perspective. We do have one school that was a diversity school that I believe is 80%, and I believe the other schools are between 45 and 50%. I will get you the definite um, percentages on that. That's great, thank you very much. But I do, I do know the diversity, um, that wasn't 80%. Okay, and then just really getting into the uh, budget season, the, the, the bond debt reserve amount that we have in conjunction with this, this bond offering, I know you probably, you know, you're gonna expect some premium, I'm just trying to gauge uh, what that will be at after this bond offering. If you don't have it now, that's fine. If you can just let me know later, that'd be great as well. Right. You, what would be the premium on the bonds? Yeah, the premium on the bonds and, and the current bond debt reserve. Um, you know, okay, we won't know the premium until we actually go to market. Um, our financial advisor has indicated that the, the recent sales he's had lately um, have had significant premiums. And we do, for um, when the premiums are very large on the bonds, we have used that, um, we have credited that to the bonded project to reduce our future bonding costs. 
Okay, thank you. And do you happen to know, or if not, if you could just send the bond debt re the reserve amount um, at some point in the future? The bond the, How much you have in reserve, uh, bond debt reserve amount? Do you have an amount um, uh, to fulfill future bonds, like a reserve account? No, we don't have a debt reserve account You don't, here. okay. It's all funded through the general fund. Is that what you mean? Yes. I thought you did. Okay, okay. no, we... Yeah, we, we um, uh, budget for a debt service on an annual basis. Okay, thank you. And then just a, a point of clarification, because this came up, and this is more for, for us. When we were going through the community center discussion some time ago, a few months ago, I was wondering if we could go out to debt, go out to bond for potential projects in the future. And I was told we couldn't uh, because we were already at our maximum debt level. And I'm not, so I'm not saying I'm for debt. I'm just stating that, you know, the, the town's done a great job and city's done a wonderful job. Uh, but I just want to point out that we're the 132, 13.2 million. Uh, this additional amount will only be at 35 percent of the 50 percent of the of the council deemed acceptable debt level. So I just wanted to clarify that when I was informed we were at a maximum debt level, that's not the case. We're well below the state statute. We're, at, we're well below the town council deemed 35, uh, 50 percent of the, what the council deemed uh, appropriate bonding. So just wanted to make that clarification. So if anyone else heard what I heard, uh, it's a little bit different. But thank you, Sydney. You're welcome. Councilor Franco. Thank you. We had the actuaries come in and discuss the um, our bonding debt, and um, in comparison to what our council limit is. And do you can you tell us? Can you explain more on that? Okay. The council has a policy, um, a debt policy that is much lower than what the state policy is, and I'm trying to find my policy here that I know I brought with me. And that is what the uh, financial advisor was referring to. Um, bear with me for one minute. Um, I think he was referring to the debt service because the council's policy says total debt service shall not exceed 10% of the general fund expenditures. And if you will know on section C, with the new debt, we will. Of the 22 adopted budget. And that's what they refer. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I was just going to ask, what is what equates that one percent? How much would that be? What is what is what left that for debt service? Well, would be thirteen million, and we are proposing the annual debt. I believe is twelve. You know, when you have so many pieces of paper. Um, oh, I understand. <laughs> Take your time. Have, Take your time. I have them all here. So Take we're looking time. at, um, with the proposed debt, we're looking at um, a $10 million, 10.9 will be principal and interest. And that is just the general fund that is not, uh, that is excluding all of the sewer debt. And so the 10%, um, we are at 9%. And um, this has um, the debt service per the town policy policy would be at 13%. Estimated debt service for the general fund and the sewer would be 12 million. So it would be like a million dollars. So we're pretty close. And that's, we are in that. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go right um, ahead. Yeah, that's what he's referring to. He's not referring to um, the state's uh, debt limit. He's referring to the debt service 10% limit. And that's the principal and interest payments that the general fund has to budget to pay outstanding debt. I appreciate your thorough uh, explanation. I appreciate that. Thank and you. And on page, I don't know, I believe it's page, it's not numbered. I believe it's like page 28 in our packet. Yep. So we're, we're peaking, it'll basically, this is our last one, we're peaking out for the 2022 and 2023 years, 
and after that it'll start going down a bit is that correct that's correct it goes down a little bit every year right. we have right. perhaps right. older debt that um is paid off as it gets paid off it goes down right and i i appreciate your explanation and thank you very much you're welcome and thank you <clears throat> I was just going to point out one thing I do have is the uh, the grant in 2020 accounts for 1.86 mills. So if, if we didn't have that, that, we'd be that much lower. Thank you. Councilor Jones. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Director Lynn, just kind of a, just a little education. Um, can you explain how the state of Connecticut could possibly give us a debt limit of $729 million? What do they base that on? And I think we're being pretty responsible for cutting that way down, but I just wonder how they come up with that, a number like that. It's a formula that the state uses, and I'm, again, with all my paper, the debt limit. And the debt limit is based on your, you start with your total tax collections, interest in liens and fees, and then the debt service limits that are set by state statute are for general purpose schools, sewers, urban renewal, unfunded pensions, and each of those um, has a base. For example, in general purpose, they give you two and a quarter times your base. Schools, you can have four and a half times the base. So it's a formula um, that is put into, it's called the statutory debt limits and town indebtedness. And we also have to factor any, um, what's called, I'm going to try to say this word, cotimerous <laughs> debt, which means we have to factor in on the debt limit, the debt that the um, fire districts and the city might also incur. That's also included um, as it's called underlying debt, and it's on our debt limit. But to answer your question, it is this formula by the state that's covered by the state statutes. And then when did the, the council put together the 50% of that limit? When was that put into effect? Um, the debt policy. Debt policy. That yeah. has been right. Um, let me get the beginning date. That's been around with the town for a number of years, and we just re. Um, bear with me. Again, I have too many pieces of paper on this tiny desk. Oops. Oh, okay. Um, there was originally. A Um, amended or revised the last revision was in November of 21 and our, it's, it's the proper title of this called the town of cotton debt policy and management slash fiscal practices and then our current one the 31.5 percent that's our current is that a the, sort of a portion of that 50 percent I'm just trying to understand where those yes, numbers came from is that that's Pardon me? So I'm just trying to understand where that number comes from, the 31.55%. Oh, that's, uh, it's a debt as a percent of the council limit. Um, do you see section C? Mm -hmm. Is that what you're looking at? Yes, yes. Okay, so the debt, the, the debt limit that the state allows us is the 700 and, um, the 729 million. So our debt to quote that we owe is 15%. And then so the debt policy says it can only be 50% of the state limit. So the 36, the 729, 364 million is 50% of the 729. Got it. And then the current and proposed as a percent of, of the council limit is the 31%. Is the 31, okay. Yeah. And we're currently at nine. Pardon me? And we're currently at 9%. That's our limit, the bottom number. Right. We're currently at yes. 9%. Okay. Right, right. Okay. We're at 9% in the, in the um, for debt service. That's yeah, principal and interest payments. And the council limit is 10%. Okay. Okay. All right, great. Thank you. I just, it, I'm just amazed that the state would allow a number like that. <laughs> just. Um, you know, I'm always shocked at <laughs> that, too. It's, it's a huge number. Right. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Director Landry. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, I'm seeing no other hands, so I'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? 
That carries unanimously. Nine in favor, zero opposed, zero abstaining. Thank you, Director Landry. Thank you very much. Okay, on to CDBG 2022 Program Income Reuse Plan. Approval of plan can be found on page 30. I make a motion to recommend a resolution to approve the 2022 Program Income Reuse Plan as written. So moved. Second, Bumgardner. Moved by Melendez, seconded by Bumgardner. Mr. Burke, you have background? John Reiner's on with okay. us. So we have John Reiner with us here to give background. Thank you. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, John Reiner and Paige Bronk here. Happy to answer any questions. We held a public hearing uh, on this item, as well as, th so th this is just changing the policy so that the town can in the future allocate program income towards uh, CDBG matching grant funds. This is not authorizing a future CDBG application yet. All right. Happy to answer any, any questions. questions. Okay, I'm seeing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? That carries unanimously. Nine in favor, zero opposed, zero abstaining. Thank you for uh, <laughs> Mr. Reiner and Mr. Brock. <laughs> yeah, John will be on. They'll be on later, too. <laughs> oh, true. <laughs> okay, we'll do a uh, five minute recess and we'll be back at 825. Okay.
So we are back from recess at 827. And we are on to Mystic Education Center update. Uh, it can be found on page 34. We have uh, Eric Callahan on the line. Um, as you know, we had our first meeting there. Your microphone's out. OK, thank you. <laughs> And Eric will do what he can in public, but just to mention, we had our first uh, our first mediation session last week. The development agreement does require us to keep that confidential, um, as well as the mediator himself requires that. So, uh, but Eric, is there you know, anything that you feel that is you're comfortable with sharing? You're muted. You're muted, Eric. I'm oh, sorry, guys. <laughs> Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, the development agreement between the town of Rotten and Restler Homes LLC has a dispute resolution procedure which the parties are following. The parties participated in a mediation on March 3rd, and there's a follow up mediation scheduled for March 14th. And the development agreement and the mediation itself requires confidentiality. And uh, that's that's about all we can share in public. Before they do the motion, Eric, uh, Rich Cody's not going to be joining us, is he? Uh, no, he's not. Okay. John. So you can strike uh, Rich Cody from that motion. Okay. I move that the members of the Town Council Committee of the Whole, Town Manager John Burt, Planning Director John Reiner, Economic Development Manager Paige Bronk, and attorney Eric Callahan go into executive session pursuant to general statute section 1-260 for the purpose of discussing strategy and negotiations related to pending claims involving the development agreement between the town of Groton and Restler Home. So moved. Second, Parker. Moved by Melinda, seconded by Second. Parker. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Carries unanimously nine. In favor, zero. Opposed, zero. Abstaining, we are in executive session.
to adjourn. So moved. Oh, we have Wolfbrook. Oh, oh we're not going to. Okay. Okay, fine. Do I have a second? No. Uh, you made the motion, right? Oh, I make the motion. Second. 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 Brute Jones. Moved by Parker, seconded by Jones. All in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> Opposed? Aye. John says it's fine. Don't no wait. Opposed? Abstention? Okay, I have three opposed. I have three opposed Franco, Bordelon, Bumgarner. Is that correct? And I believe the Council of Okay, and I have one abstaining. Westervelt. So that's five in favor. We are adjourned at 928.